Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's with a gun I never thought I'd actually see. This is a pre-production prototype of the Pancor Jackhammer Mark II. So several years ago, I think it was about six years ago now, I had an opportunity to do some filming with the only surviving extant uh, example of the actual Pancor Jackhammer. This was a uh, select fire, a fully automatic 12 gauge combat shotgun that was developed by a guy named John Anderson. He had been a Korean War vet, he'd used combat shotguns, and he thought they were kind of inefficient. Like they don't hold enough rounds, and well, who doesn't want a full auto combat shotgun firing number four buckshot? John Anderson certainly did, and so by gum he just built his own. Uh, and he built three working models of them. Uh, one, the first one he kept for himself, and that's the one that I filmed. I will of course link that video at the end of this one. So if you haven't seen the original functional proper Pancor jackhammer, you can check that out, full teardown and how it works. Uh, the other two that he made actually went to HP White for full-on military testing, and they actually did complete destructive testing on both guns. It went pretty well. The military, apparently the Navy in particular, was potentially interested in these guns, but they kind of dithered on making a decision and putting up funding uh, to further develop the guns. Uh, Anderson got a lot of interest uh, from really around the world, but nobody who was willing to pay, you know, put in the money necessary to really do the tooling and development. And while his guns were under consideration by the US military, uh, the US government decided eh, they didn't really want to allow him to export the guns or the technology. So the project ultimately kind of fizzled out and died for lack of financial support. Before it did though, Anderson recognized that there were some shortcomings in his original design, and he started working up a new pattern, uh, an improved pattern. Lighten up some parts, more substantially I think strengthen up some of the other parts to make the gun more durable, more reliable. And that was going to be the Mark II. Now, in my original video I said there were three Pancors made and there's only one surviving, and that is, I would say, mostly correct. <laughs> because what we have here is a, it's somewhere in between a Mark II and a mock-up of a Mark II. So this is actually registered as a machine gun. Uh, it is legally a machine gun. The core of the, the, the frame of the gun is there, but this was never actually completed to firing condition. And so uh, basically this is this was in progress when the funding ran out and the project kind of fell apart. But uh, it is here today. So let's take a closer look and I'll show you what this does do with a recognition that it's not actually fully functional. Sorry, I think I said Mark II, I meant Mark III as you can see here. Uh, Jackhammer Mark III A2, uh, Pancor 12 gauge. Uh, nice and convenient markings there on the frame. The overall configuration of the gun is the same as the original jackhammer, but there are a number of subtle changes that have been made here. For example, this top rail with the sighting rib on the original guns, that was a sheet metal uh, piece that was kind of pressed in place. Uh, on this it's a solid aluminum uh, element, and if we were to take the the muzzle cone off, this would slide off the top. It's dovetailed onto the receiver. So it's a much sturdier uh, way to do the sight rib than the original uh, sheet metal piece was. The jackhammer is a gas operated blow forward system. Uh, the barrel actually cycles forward every time you fire, and then uh, it uses a revolving drum magazine that has these external cuts in it, much like a Webley Fosbury or a Mauser Zigzag revolver. Now this drum does not match the pattern of the, the drum on the functional gun, and I suspect that this one is not actually completed yet, because none of these uh, cuts are angled. And they should either be connected to allow a uh, control pin to run through the whole system, or they should be angled to work with a spring-loaded control pin, something like that. So I suspect the drum is not completely finished. In addition, a firing mechanism was never added into this. So down in here we should have the actual striker or firing pin. On the functional gun there's a little trigger shaped handle back here that allows you to recock the gun if it doesn't fire for whatever reason. Um, and that's never been installed. These three screws on the top don't actually do anything. If I pull one out here, 
they are just a little short stubby screw, and there's nothing down in there that they connect to. In fact, you can see that the threading is only long enough to, like, it, it threads into this piece and it doesn't actually connect to anything lower. Uh, we have the pump handle here, which also does not appear to be connected to anything yet. Um, so if I pull this forward, we have an operating bar inside it. Uh, but as far as I can tell, that operating bar isn't connected to anything. Once again, I suspect if I could pull this off, uh, which would require a wrench, then the pump handle could be removed off the front of the gun. There is a safety lever here, what is probably a safety lever, which also does not appear to have any function at the current time. It slides through to the other side. The trigger moves, uh, and at the end of travel here it is connected to this uh, operating rod, but the trigger doesn't actually do anything there. Well, because of course at the back here we don't have a firing mechanism for the trigger to interact with. The front of the pump handle has this spring catch on it um, that is, I suspect, uh, a pump lock. Uh, keep in mind that this is normally, uh, the functional one, is a semi or full auto gun, so you don't actually have to pump it for every shot. Instead the pump handle acts like a charging handle, and so I suspect in order to when it was complete, the idea was that in order to actually charge it you have to depress this button to engage the handle, uh, so that if you are putting forward pressure on the handle while actually shooting you wouldn't cause a malfunction, unless you're pushing that button. We've got a couple of sling swivel studs for it, top and bottom there, as well as this rotating collar on the muzzle, which I believe is for a sling swivel. So it's still a, a pretty chunky, hefty gun. The original was 17 and a half pounds. This is probably a little less, but not that much less. Um, this is still made of a lot of pretty heavy duty uh, castings. Actually, neither I nor anybody I knew of had any idea that this gun existed when I filmed that, uh, that last video. Uh, this came from actually John Anderson's widow who had it. Uh, and when she saw the, the original gun has gone up for auction again since my video filmed it. It's gone through I think three or four different owners now after Anderson. And Anyway, she saw it go up for auction at one point and went, huh, I've got something still kind of like that. This. And uh, so that's why it's here at Morphe's now. So uh, if there's anyone out there who is interested in a Pancor jackhammer, either um, uh, to keep static like this, or if you're a machinist, like this presents a really interesting opportunity because it is already a registered full auto Pancor jackhammer 12 gauge shotgun, just in need of completion, should you want to complete it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, whether anyone ever completes this or not, it's neat to be able to see uh, what was basically the very end of the line for the Pancor shotgun. Thanks for watching.